Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. Welcome back to Biochemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video and the next several, we're going to be talking about endocannabinoids. Eventually, this is going to lead us to talking about things like tetrahydrocannabinol, so THC, and cannabidiol, or CBD, which are really common to talk about in today's culture. But before we get into those, we really need to have an understanding of the endocannabinoid system. So real quick, what is an endocannabinoid? An endocannabinoid is a cannabinoid compound that is made endogenously, meaning within your own body. So you have your own cells, in particular neurons, that make and release these endocannabinoids. Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about their biosynthesis. There's two major ones, although there are others. And then in the next video, we're going to go into their basic mechanism of action, and then we'll go from there. So let's talk about their biosynthesis. So endocannabinoids are actually synthesized from a couple of phospholipids. So here's an example, phosphatidylcholine, and the other one is phosphatidylethanolamine. Now we know the general structure of a phospholipid. You've got a glycerol backbone and you've got two fatty acid chains, right? Now we have this enzyme here called NaCl transferase. What this enzyme does is it takes one of the fatty acids from one of these phospholipids and it transfers it to the other one. More specifically, it takes one of those fatty acids from phosphatidylcholine and it transfers it to phosphatidylethanolamine. Okay? So take a look at this compound right here. Okay, this whole thing is called n arachidonoyl phosphatidylethanolamine, sometimes called NAEP. Okay? If you basically take this compound and draw a vertical line right here, see where my mouse is? Everything to the right of that, so from this nitrogen and all this stuff over here, that is phosphatidylethanolamine. This part over here, which I've cut off part of it just for the sake of space, this is arachidonic acid. And notice that arachidonic acid's carboxyl group has now been uh, converted into a, an amide bond with the nitrogen of the head group of phosphatidylethanolamine. So in essence, basically what this enzyme did is it took an arachidonic acid fatty acid from phosphatidylcholine and transferred it onto the head group of phosphatidylethanolamine. And that not only gives you this sort of waste product, lysophosphatidylcholine, but it gives you the precursor to both of these endocannabinoids, which is n arachidonoyl phosphatidylethanolamine. And again, it's named this way because on this nitrogen, the N, you now have this arachidonoyl group, okay, which is arachidonic acid. And understand that in places, I've cut off part of it just for the sake of space. All right, now, phospholipase D can act on NAEP. Now, what does phospholipase D do? Well, what it does is it targets this bond right here between the phosphorus of the phosphate and this oxygen. So it cuts this bond through hydrolysis. And what that does is it yields anandamide. Notice if you split this bond right here, all this other stuff from the oxygen left comes off. That's anandamide. That's our first endocannabinoid. But also it gives you this structure, which is everything else to the right of that bond that was split, and that's phosphatidic acid, sort of the basic phospholipid. And from here, phosphatidic acid can be converted uh, into the other endocannabinoid. And that's initiated through the action of phospholipase C beta. Now phospholipase C beta, is basically just going to hydrolyze off this phosphate. This bond right there, I'm zoomed out a little bit, but between the phosphorus, or yes, phosphorus atom and this oxygen, this gets hydrolyzed. So you lose the phosphate and you end up with diacylglycerol or DAG. Now there's another way you can get DAG, and that's through phospholipase C beta's action on PIP2. Now PIP2 is shown here, we've seen before in biosignaling pathways. This is phosphatidylinositol 4 5 bisphosphate. And so this is just a phospholipid that you find in the plasma membrane. And so what can happen is phospholipase C beta can cleave this bond right down here. So it's actually this one right there. So this one actually gets split between this phosphorus and this oxygen. And again, the product of that that's relevant here would just be this diacylglycerol. So there's a couple ways you can get this. 
But in any case, diacylglycerol is hydrolyzed by diacylglycerol lipase. And what this enzyme really does is it cuts off this other fatty acid here. In this case, it's a saturated fatty acid, although it doesn't have to be. But this one right here on the one position gets removed. Now, if you take a look at this glycerol backbone, this would be the one position. This would be the two position right here. So this arachidonic acid that you see right there is on the two position. So if you remove the one position fatty acid, what are you left with? Well, two arachidonoyl glycerol, or two AG. So that really gives us the two major endocannabinoids. The first here, which was anandamide, is sometimes called AEA, which stands for arachidonoyl ethanolamine. And then this one down here, 2-AG, which is 2-arachidonoyl glycerol. Now in the next video, we're going to see how these endocannabinoids function. What's their basic mechanism of action? But before we do that, I just want to end this video with one brief thing. So it turns out that NaCl transferase right here is the committed step in endocannabinoid synthesis. That's just because, really, once you form NAEP, NAEP doesn't really do anything else. So it's committed uh, to forming these two endocannabinoids. So if you want to activate endocannabinoid synthesis, it would make sense to activate this committed step, NaCl transferase. And it turns out that in neurons, some neurons, not all of them, um, elevated levels of calcium tend to activate NaCl transferase. Now, that might not make a lot of sense right now, but once we get into the mechanism, you'll see why elevated calcium activating this enzyme becomes important. It's because these two compounds are going to actually act as negative feedback regulators of neurotransmitter release. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of endocannabinoid biosynthesis. In the next video, we're going to start looking at the basic mechanism of action of these two endocannabinoids. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.